insecurity, and the urgent need for police reform in Nigeria. It is an understatement to say that the state of insecurity in our nation is disturbing. Almost everyone knows someone who was recently robbed, kidnapped, or killed. The most fundamental term of our social contrast is security of life and property. Sadly, that can no longer be guaranteed in Nigeria, and things are getting worse. There is a complete state of war in the Northeast, kidnapping and banditry everywhere else, the unending and ever increasing farmer sellers crisis, armed robbery, the list is endless. A report by the Open Society Initiative for West Africa states that the number of small arms in the hands of civilian non-state actors nationwide is estimated at 6,145,000, whilst that of the armed forces and law enforcement agency collectively is about 586,600 firearms, representing about 8.71% of the total arms and firearms in circulation. This is antithetical to Max Weber's view that only state should lay claim to the monopoly of legitimate physical violence within a certain territories. In our case, the people with access to resources to cause violence are in the frightening majority. It cannot be overemphasized that our security system is in a sorry state. That is also the state of our police. A visit to any police division and police barracks will convince you. Currently, our police lack the requisite support, adequate remuneration, equipment, and training to effectively carry out this enormous task. Prior to the NSAS protest, a police recruit earns 9,000 Naira per month. This is a violation of the Minimum Wage Act. The basic salary of a commissioner of police is about 260,000 per month, and a corporal earns 51,000 Naira per month. And we wonder where our problems are emanate from. Well, I will suggest some reforms, and you can add yours. Restructure the Nigerian police force, strengthen local police force, and induce constitutional amendment to allow state government to establish state or community police for the purpose of crime prevention, detection, and prosecution within their jurisdictions. The welfare of the Nigerian police should be immediately addressed by ensuring better conditions of service, better remuneration, housing, and other benefits. I personally would suggest 200,000 Naira per month for an entry level officer. Some level of free education should be considered for policemen and women's children. Earth insurance schemes, life insurance, house mortgage schemes, amongst others. Entry level recruitment should not be below OND and to ensure that police training meets international standards. The length of training should not be less than 18 months. Also, there should be provisions for continuous human capacity development for the Nigerian police to close the skill gaps amongst the personnel. <laughs> There's a need for periodic psychological evaluation for every police person during recruitment and throughout their service years. The government needs to provide modern equipment to combat crimes and design a system for equipment financing for the police on an ongoing basis and ensure deployment of technology for crime detection, investigation, and prevention. Develop an anti-corruption enforcement framework for the Nigerian police force to tackle issues of commercialization of bail, the nuisance of roadblocks, the unceasing harassment, amongst others. Only a safe environment will guarantee economic development and good life that we all desire. We must reform the Nigerian police, and we need to do so now. Very interesting, the numbers that you've <coughs> raised. I totally agree with the reforms. Asking for 200,000 at entry level is also workable. It will just take us to also check the earning capacity of the country. Mm and the distribution capacity. Are we going to talk about the news of the 60 billion that has to be printed to get monies into the system? But if we can get it right, I think we will have the police force that we seek. Well, I think I substantially agree with uh, Francis. I mean, it couldn't have been even better put. 
Um, of course, by the Constitution, uh, Section 14, Subsection 2B is very clear that the security and the welfare of the people, of course, is, the, is at the heart of the social contract between the citizens and the government. And when that is broken, then you have a recipe for anarchy. And it's not surprising that there's a relationship between the breakdown of security at large and the wobbling state of the Nigerian state, both in terms of economy and what have you. Because if we have a strong security infrastructure, to a large extent, we wouldn't have the rising speed of kidnappings, insurgency, and in the southeast and all of that. All of this, all of this aggregate to create a shock for the system. You understand? Mm -hmm. So if we had a better security system in place, we wouldn't have the right the upsurge in insurgency. The monies we are spending funding the insurgency wars would have okay. committed it to other development aspects of the nation. So security is actually instructive and we really have to get it right. And I agree with most of your recommendations. As a matter of fact, after the, um, in the wake of the NSAS protest, I was privileged to work with the office of the Speaker of the House of Representatives. And the question was, how do we, what can we do to create, to get a legal framework that will improve the, 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 the current police structure we there have. There is none. In terms, of, in terms of the welfare of the, mem of the rank and file, you understand? So we looked at the Police Service Commission um, Act, which was passed in, two, in 2000. So we have redrafted it, and we've made, uh, to, I'm very surprised that all your recommendations actually form part of what you recommended in that bill. Mm. And I'm happy to announce that it has passed second reading on the floor of both House of National Assembly, and we are hopeful that if it eventually gets signed into law, the, these things can begin to be addressed. But certainly, we can't uh, compromise security. Yeah. Comfort, let's hear your view. It, yes, uh, thank you. Not taking away from what, um, you know, what you read, what you said, um, what befundles me is the fact that we have to say this all the time. This is not the first time that, you know, people have, you know, put this clearly. I mean, if you had even just stopped at the need for police reforms, you would have, I mean, you would have been 100% without even breaking it down. Because without breaking it down, can't they see, can't the government see that this is what is needed? I mean, if you're going to take the history of even insurgency, we're talking about at least 10 years. You mean in those 10 years, nobody thought it fit that the National Assembly, the government itself should have taken this without us every single opportunity we get laying it out. So yes, I mean, fantastic and all that. I'm happy to hear what you said that um, you were part of a committee and that finally they have seen the need to put, uh, uh, I mean, I'm not impressed um, because I mean, I'm really not impressed unless we need to have a bill to remind them every time that please, when you see things going wrong, go, can you put yourself into our shoes and please make sure that these things go ahead. So, I mean, kudos anyway, at least for what it is worth, hope alive. There's something, I just pray that the people who are there are human beings so that they'll be able to implement these things because this is so long overdue. The statistics you even wrote, I mean, is shocking. It's yeah. appalling. It shouldn't even be something that should be printed for us to see because, I, I, I mean, I, I mean, that's all I have to say, to be honest. It's annoying. I was going to, uh, you know, in recent times, we've seen regional, you know, the, uh, the debate on state police has always been with us, yes. at least since the Fourth Republic. Yes. And it appears we are, perforce, we are inching towards state police, even though not uh, uh, in a clear legal sense of it. You understand? Uh, we mm. saw the southwestern uh, oh, states, they have come up with the Amotekun. If you ask me that is regional police, that is state police, yeah. even if maybe uh, I will call it de facto, de facto state police in play. Mm. Now, because of what happened in the southeast, we now have the Ebibagu, mm. the glory of the tiger mm. in play. You understand? Yeah. So. States are now taking, taking charge. They are, they, are, they are taking charge because the federal government uh, doesn't seem to, they, at the end of the day, they are the chief security officers of their state, at least in principle. Mm. And I think uh, we, 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 just hope that, we just hope that uh, they actually get the, the objective for which this outfit are set up are actually being uh, actualized. I, 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 I agree with you and comfort. The only fear is that there is no uniform legal framework for the state to run this system that they, they have started practicing. Yes. And that can create some fears. But the fear 
of a thing should not discourage us from, from practicing it or trying right. it. Exactly. And exactly. to close with comfort statement that we've been saying this for the umpteen time, there is a problem in my, there's a proverb in my place mm -hmm. that says woro woro la difaditi, that the deaf person, mm -hmm. by the time you are throwing the incantation to the ifa, you continue to do it repeatedly. Yes. And the deaf, even if you cannot hear you, will make a we'll sense of it. what you are saying. Oh, okay. Repetition is the law of deep and lasting impression. Interesting. We're just not relenting, right? Yes. We keep going. We keep going until we get. Next is Joyce. Talking about the need for a new constitution. Stay with us. <laughs>